Guys, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, it really does help support my uh, channel and it helps my channel grow, helps my channel get out there. So, uh, yeah, on to the video. Give Tyson Fury a chance. You know, when I see the buildup of this fight of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder, I'm noticing that a lot of people are not really giving Tyson Fury a chance against Deontay Wilder. Like, not just like uploaders, but like professional fighters. You know, people uh, in, the, in the media, people who are involved in boxing, right? Every time I see a fighter being interviewed, it, the, the title always starts with something like this. This fighter warns Tyson Fury. That fighter warns Tyson Fury. I've seen at least uh, five uh, videos of professional fighters being interviewed. And the title always reads, you know, this guy's warning Tyson Fury's of his chances against uh, Deontay Wilder. Warning about his punching power. Warning about this. Warning about that. As if Tyson Fury doesn't know what he's up against. You know, I believe that Tyson Fury is an intelligent fighter. You know, I've seen, I've been looking at Tyson Fury interviews for years. And one thing I'll tell you about Tyson Fury is he is a clown, right? He is a clown. He's an entertainer, right? But he's also an intelligent fighter. I've always thought that secretly he knows what he's talking about and he knows what he's doing, right? I think he is fully aware of what he's getting, what he's going to be up against when he fights Deontay Wilder. He knows that Deontay Wilder has a one punch game changer right so you're not going to see uh tyson fury just march against deontay wilder with his hands below his waist asking for him to get knocked out against deontay wilder he's not going to do that right i think tyson fury fights a style based off what his opponent you know the, the threat of his opponent when he fought vladimir klitschko I remember Tyson Fury saying he was going to go after Vladimir Klitschko. This was going to be a, you know, he was going to knock out. No, he kept saying that. He kept saying, I'm going to knock you out, you bum. He was saying that he was going to knock out Vladimir Klitschko. It was going to be a war. And what did that fight turn out to be? If It turned out to be a very uh, stinker type of fight. Because all that was just build up what Tyson Fury was saying. He had a game plan the whole time leading up to that fight. And that was make Klitschko... Go after him. Use his height and reach advantage against Klitschko. He had the longer reach. He was taller. He had the speed and the boxing ability, the boxing IQ to outbox Klitschko. And he knew that Vladimir Klitschko was a guy that needed you to be standing right in front of him. And he knew that Vladimir Klitschko was not comfortable cutting off the ring and going after you and doing what you, and basically going on, on the inside. Because Vladimir Klitschko was supposed to go on the inside. And basically be aggressive and take risks in order to win a single round against Tyson Fury. But if you look at that fight, Vladimir Klitschko was so hesitant to uh, let his hands go. Look at that fight. He was just following Fury, but he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to go on the inside. Tyson Fury's game plan, you know, Peter Fury's game plan, it worked out perfectly for them because they knew that that type of style was a nightmare for Vladimir Klitschko. Because Vladimir Klitschko is not good at going on the inside he, he's not a guy who's that's why he you, you notice every time somebody goes on the inside against Vladimir Klitschko he would always hug them because he doesn't feel comfortable when a guy's on the inside against him he doesn't feel comfortable so he has to hug them or lean them. that's why he leans on them whenever Pavekin Pavec, went on the inside whenever Lamont Brewster went on the inside he would lean on them he doesn't like it when a guy's all up in his grill Vladimir Klitschko that's why he himself is not comfortable going on the inside against fighters. And that's why he was uncomfortable doing that against Tyson Fury. He was intimidated by getting uh, countered by Tyson Fury. And he just didn't feel comfortable fighting that type of style. He had to fight that aggressive, in-your-face type of style to win rounds against Tyson Fury. He didn't feel comfortable. But again, Fury is an intelligent fighter. He knew that he had to fight this way. I think... When he sees Deontay Wilder, he knows that Deontay Wilder can be our box, right? He looks at Deontay Wilder, and he, you know, he saw, he was there in the audience when Deontay Wilder fought uh, Arthur Spilka, right? He saw that fight live, 
I remember he was sitting there in the audience with his cousin Huey Fury, and you could see him there looking at the fight. So he saw Arthur Spilka winning rounds against Deontay Wilder, right? Obviously, he saw the knockout, right? But he was he saw Arthur Spilka fighting the way he fought against Klitschko. Because if, if you look at Arthur Spilka, Arthur Spilka, I remember looking at that fight. I was thinking, as I was watching that fight, I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, this guy, Arthur Spilka, is kind of like a miniature version of like Tyson Fury. Because, you know, Arthur Spilka is like 6'2", 6'3". And Arthur Spilka is a guy who turned pro as a cruiserweight. If you actually look at his box track, he fought his first couple of fights as a cruiserweight. So he's actually a cruiserweight who moved up to heavyweight. That's why he's a short, you know, heavyweight. He's like only 6'2", 6'3". But again, he was a cruiserweight at one point. Um, so if you look at that fight, I remember watching that fight. I, I, I was thinking to myself, you know, he has like, he's reminiscent to uh, Tyson Fury. He's like a miniature version of Tyson Fury. Because Tyson Fury is much taller than someone like him, right? And if you look at that fight, he was fighting an in and out style, right? He was using his legs a lot against Wilder. He kept moving and he would come in, he will throw a combination, he will leap out. He was forcing Deontay Wilder to, like he was not standing in front of Deontay Wilder, right? He kept, he, he kept doing this in and out type of style. And Wilder, that, I learned in that fight that Wilder didn't know how to cut the ring off. Because in order to be, for example, look at when that, that remember that Polish fighter that fought uh, Arthur Spoka? The guy who just fought Charles Martin? Oh my God, I already forgot his name, man. But that guy who just fought and was in a war with uh, Charles Martin and uh, the guy who who fought Arthur Spoka, he came after Arthur Spoka. Look at Brian Jennings when Brian Jennings fought Arthur Spoka. He went after Arthur Spoka. He went on the inside against him. That's how you beat Arthur Spoka. You go on the inside against Arthur Spoka and you walk him down. Deontay Wilder showed me in that fight that he... They didn't know how to walk down an opponent because, again, look at Art, look at the the Polish guy who fought Arthur Spoka, and look at um, when Brian Jennings fought Arthur Spoka. Both of those guys walked down Arthur Spoka because what Arthur Spoka with his in and out type of style, you gotta walk this guy down. You gotta put him against the ropes, and that's how you beat him. That's how you wilt him. Both po that Polish guy and Art and uh, Brian Jennings, they both TKO'd Arthur Spoka because they was they were relentless with him when it came to the pressure. Look at the look at the first. Six to eight rounds of Arthur Spoka versus Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder wasn't putting the pressure on Arthur Spoka. He looked, uh, he looked like he was confused, like he was trying to, like he didn't know what to do in there. And the whole time, Arthur Spoka was just outboxing him. Like I was giving literally every single round to Arthur Spoka. That showed me two things. It showed me that Deontay Wilder can be outboxed because, like I said, that in and out movement and staying on the ins on the on the outside and then just coming in to throw combinations and, and then leap out. That was winning rounds against Deontay Wilder. That showed me he could be outboxed, Deontay Wilder. That also showed me that Deontay Wilder doesn't know how to cut the ring off against styles like that. Which means if a guy is able to do that for 12 rounds and Deontay Wilder is not able to land his right hand, that guy would beat Deontay Wilder via decision. Uh, so again, what built Deontay Wilder out? It was, of course, landing his right hand. So again... Arthur, I mean, uh, Tyson Fury saw that. So he knows that that type of in-and-out style that he has the ability to do can defeat someone like Deontay Wilder, right? I don't expect Tyson Fury to go guns blazing after Deontay Wilder. I expect him to be cautious. I expect him to, like I say, he's an intelligent fighter, him to be very aware of Deontay Wilder's right hand. I expect him, you're probably going to see him fighting a negative fight, but I expect him to fight a negative fight. Because that's how he's supposed to... That's how you beat Deontay Wilder. I've said this in the past and I'll say it again. If Deontay Wilder did not have that right hand, if he wasn't a puncher, he would have lost... I believe he would have three losses in his in his resume already. Because I've seen him lose rounds. And the thing that always bails him out is his right hand, is his puncher power. When it comes to Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury, the reason people aren't giving him much of a chance has to simply do with the fact that he's been inactive, right? But we have to keep in mind that this is not the, the only fighter who was inactive and came back in a big major fight and was able to upset the guy. You know, back in 1987, Sugar Ray Leonard fought uh, Marvin Hagler. Now, when Sugar Ray Leonard fought Marvin Hagler, he was coming off a three-year layoff, right? He had last fought in the year 1984, and he fought Sugar Ray, and he fought Marvin Hagler in the year 1987. So he was coming off a three-year layoff. At the time, Marvin Hagler was the number one 
middleweight in the world. He he had this. He had several title defenses. Maybe I think fifteen. It's been a while since I've, I've researched that, but I think over fifteen title defenses. He was going on like a seven, eight year undefeated run. I mean, winning streak, right? He literally nearly a decade of just winning. And he was also bigger, not in terms of height, but in terms of like weight. He was a natural middleweight. While Sugar Ray Leonard turned pro at a welterweight, 147. So he came back after a three year layoff and he managed to beat the number one middleweight in the world, which was Marvin Hagler. Right, he managed to outbox him. I know it was a controversy fight. Some people thought Marvin Hagler won, but at the end of the day, he was winning rounds against Marvin Hagler. Right, he did win rounds. Right, so I I don't think that it's out of the. It would be like extremely shocking if Tyson Fury manages to win rounds against uh, Deontay Wilder. Because again, if somebody like Sugar Ray Leonard could do that. After coming up, because he was even, Sugar Ray Leonard was in a worse position than Tyson Fury because he didn't even have tune up fights. He just came back after three years and fought him. At least Tyson Fury had some tune up fights. I'm saying, if someone like Sugar Ray Leonard could do that, why would it be um, unimaginable for somebody like Tyson Fury to be able to pull off the same thing? Now, again, I'm not saying he's going to win. But I'm, but I'm saying, don't, I think we should not, like, I think people just think that Wilder's just going to knock him out in two rounds. Like, don't be surprised. I'm saying this. Don't be surprised if it's round five, six, and Tyson Fury's up ahead in the scorecards. Again, I'm not saying he's going to win. I'm not saying it's going to be round 12, the fight's going to be over, and Tyson Fury's going to have his hands raised up and win via unanimous, unanimous decision. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that don't be surprised if it's round five, six, seven, and Tyson Fury is simply ahead on the scorecards. Because when it comes to the boxing, when it comes to being able to win rounds against guys, just off the skill set, Tyson Fury is much better than Deontay Wilder. All right. So again, don't be surprised if it's round eight, seven. Tyson Fury is up in the scorecards, and then he gets caught with a right hand. Because I believe that's what's going to happen. I believe what's going to happen is Tyson Fury is going to be up on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage. I believe it's going to be around eight, nine, ten. He's going to be up in the scorecards, and then Tyson Fury is going to get clipped with, with a Tyson, with a Deontay Wilder right hand, and then he's going to it's going to he's going to finish him off. But not after him successfully winning rounds against uh, Deontay Wilder. Because again, I've seen Deontay Wilder lose rounds several times. And Tyson Fury is not an over-the-hill fighter. Yes, he was abusing his body. Yes, he was in a mass- massive layoff. But he's been... He's, he, he, I think he's serious now, right? At least he had these two tune-up fights. He should have had more fights, but... He's still young, right? He's only 30 years old. It's not like he's, you know... It, I'll be, I wouldn't be saying this if he was like 38 because... Your reflexes at that age are like really downhill, you know, down the drain at that point. But I think Tyson Fury still has enough talent and still has enough youth to be able to win some rounds against uh, Deontay Wilder. It's basically what I'm saying, what I'm going at. Uh, I want to, I wouldn't be shocked if he won either. If if he won the fight, I would not be shocked. I'm pretty sure there'll be several people saying this is an upset win this is an upset win i can't believe tyson fury upset it deontay wilder i can't believe he beat him but i won't be saying that personally because i always knew that tyson fury was a better talent than deontay wilder and i've seen the history of boxing uh fighters have managed to come back after long periods of layoffs and still managed to win against top quality fighters again when it comes to uh, deontay wilder he does have a dev- step devastating punch but he is capable of losing several rounds against boxers. Again, I'm not picking Tyson Fury to win, but I do expect him to win several rounds against Deontay Wilder before being stopped by him. And like I said, I wouldn't be shocked and in the at all if he if he manages to pull the upset and win. I wouldn't consider that upset because I've always knew that uh, Tyson Fury was a better talent uh, than someone like Deontay Wilder. Like I said, if you are able to take away Deontay Wilder's right hand and win rounds against him, I personally believe you will be able to beat him via decision. Anyway, guys, I have to say, subscribe for the ladies in boxing, and uh, I'm out. Thanks for watching.